Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Um, I just want to testify about a God who is supreme, a God who is mighty to save, a God who is a mighty healer, the great orchestrator, really and truly. Um, I remember years ago, um, I was actually a very sick child. I've been in the hospital in and out for quite some years consistently. And at one point, you know, my lungs collapsed. My right lung, like the area there literally sunk in and it totally collapsed. And that sent me into ICU, intensive care unit. And I was there for quite some time. Um, I remember when my mother actually came to look at me when they first admitted me into ICU because, you know, I was basically well strapped up, you know, a tube going down my mouth, I had an oxygen mask here. Everywhere was just, you know, connected to some device. And like, I guess my mother, the last time she saw me, I was in the ward. So when she came and she saw that, you know, I was totally tied up and wrapped up in ICU, it was like she literally just, she lost it. I mean, I remember I was on the bed and looking and I saw her just run, like she literally just ran out. And I remember hearing screamings and shouts. Of course, I was half alive, wasn't sure what was going on. But, you know, seeing that, I was told the story that she was, was outside screaming, you know, shouting, couldn't believe that her son was in such a state as this. And at that point, the doctor had to actually run her down and inject her to calm her because of how bad it actually was. But um, I was in ICU for quite some time, and I remember at that time the whole church, the whole church was literally on prayer and fasting for me to recover. And I remember when the church would literally just you know, stand up, you know, as one, just to ensure to pray for me that God will work, that I will recover. Um, I was there, you know, sometimes I'll be unconscious for like two weeks, three weeks straight, just in the hospital there, not responsive, not doing anything. And sometime I will wake up again and they will administer their normal drug or any food that was there. But I remember there was a specific time when I woke up and I remember feeling the touch of my mother holding my hands, you know, and uh, me, you know, s tightly got bound back to it. And then I remember she saying to me, you know, Karim, Karim, you know, and I responded. And then I remember she telling me, apparently she wasn't supposed to wake me up at that time, but I remember she telling me that, you know, the doctor say you're going to die. Like you're not going to make it. And at that point, you know, I opened my eyes and I started crying. Cause you know, a sick child in the bed, and you hear your mother tell you that. And especially with the voice, the brokenness that you hear her say it, you know, you makes you wonder and say, Oh boy, all of this son. You know, he's, um, I'm going out shortly. But yeah, I mean, I just started crying, started crying, and she was trying to comfort me. And the situation was really bad, you know, because I was fighting a sickness. And I remember, even throughout all of that, you know, I was unconscious in and out. And then I remember at one point, the doctors told my mother, that's the story she told me after I survived that, you know, he's not going to make it. He only has three days to live. He only has three days to live. And I was actually, I was actually on life support machine as well in ICU. And I wasn't going to make it. They have done everything. They tried everything, but 
nothing is working, you know. And then I remember my mother told me that she just went home. She went home and just, you know, visualizing the funeral in her mind, saying that, you know, she has to start planning the funeral. My father, who cared for me so much, even up to today, he still worries about me. Every little thing, if I sneeze, if I have a cold, he get worried and stuff. And, you know, it, Everybody was devastated, you know. My mother used to have plant yam and pumpkin in the yard and when I was sick everything just died off. Everything died off because, you know, she just couldn't manage that her son was in the hospital. So, you know, my mother was there and it's like she accepted the fate that, you know, this is it. And I remember on the second or on the third day I opened my eyes in ICU, like I, I woke up and the doctors were astonished because they said it's not possible because the only thing that was alive, the only thing that was working was his brain. The only thing that was active according to the doctors was the brain was still surviving but everything else was near, near ending, near to death, you know, basically on the deathbed. But on the same day that they said that I should have died, you know, I opened my eyes. And, you know, uh, I was saying, you know, God just works. God intentionally ensures that he, he waits until the doctor says, all right, this is it, you know, with all the degrees, with all the, the training that they have gotten. Right, God strategically waited until they said, you know, the third day and my eyes opened in the ICU bed. And I guess my mother got the call and he said, you know, he, he woke up, he's awake. And she was astonished because, you know, she was at home for most part, just praying, I mean, as much as you see her here smelling and stuff, she's gone through a lot, right? She will stay home and pray, pray, you know, she even tell me instances of God visiting her and she run, go under the table, hide, because she, she does never, she, could, she does never, I guess when God visits you like that, you know, you're, you tend to be friend, a deity coming to you. You know, and I guess I remember at one point, mom said that she remember seeing an angel carrying me up, carrying me up into the heavens. And she shouted, no, 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 not no. Let him live, God. And now, you know, to see me here, you know, standing and testifying, it's, it's amazing. It really is. So, yeah, um, so I woke up and then I started to recover rapidly in ICU. They took out the, thing, the, the tube out of my mouth that went to my lungs to help me to breathe. And they detached me from every device and, you know, I was free, you know, free from ICU. I mean, I've been in there so long. I mean, it's a dark place, actually. I remember in the hospital and seeing there was like me and like two other beds over there. And I seen the beds just coming out one by one, then put sheet over, that bed gone. Next thing the guy wasn't moving, they move him again. Just consistently I would see this. I see people die in front of me. I have a neighbor with the same issue, he died. You know, many of them never survived such illness that I had to go through. But you know, as I say, God is mighty to heal. God is the great orchestrator. Right? He does everything for his glory. So, <laughs> so um, I recovered. I'm out of ICU at home, but I still couldn't fully breathe on my own because my lungs wasn't strong enough. And I was carrying around an oxygen tank. I'm pretty sure some of you might remember me, you know, walking with that. <laughs> but yeah, I had to still walk with an oxygen tank and, you know, they said that I'll probably be on it for a long time quite some time but you know I eventually came off it you know I remember um, I went overseas for treatment and they recommended some 
you know, short, some soft sports, riding bicycle and stuff. And I came in the cleaner, you know, as the young boy who survived amidst all his ailments. And I remember a specific nurse was very upset that, you know, why is he riding a bicycle? He's not supposed to be doing any strenuous work. That was when I was still on the oxygen tank. But, I mean, everything they said I couldn't do, I've basically done it. Right? So, uh, it's like everything. It's, it's almost as if I never went through anything. It's almost as if I don't have anything. Because most persons who can move up and down and up and about the country and whatnot, they, they can't do that. They can't do that. You know, if they have a broken bone, like they, can't, they can't withstand it that much. They have to go to the doctor right away. And I remember even recently, I think it was late last year, I was coming from church and I went into my bed and I realized that, you know, my speech was slurred. It just became slurred and my right side just started to feel heavy and I'm saying, what is this? You know, I was wondering, what is this? And I was there just trying to recover and whatnot and you know, I survived the night and then I was told that I actually suffered a mild stroke. I suffered a mild stroke. It was late last year. But um, friends were there. I mean, people called me. Um, Siobhan Carter, Jovan Hayden, they, you know, they keep in touch with me. Romeo Hall, all of them called me and they really prayed for me and that. And I think after like, after like the weekend, I still went to work. I mean, I had to like drag this foot a little bit to work and whatnot, but I'm a person, I tend not to stay in one place, you understand? So I, just, I, I prefer to fight going on the road than to stay in bed sick. And even right now, I, I feel good. I mean, I don't look like I had a stroke or anything. I mean, God is a healer, guys. God is supreme. And I just want to say this, that it doesn't matter what it is that you're going through. Jesus is the great orchestrator. Right? He orchestrates everything for his glory and for our good as well. There might be a little pain here and there, but you know, there's always pain there. When a baby is born, they cry first, and then they are the nice, cute little baby that they are. Right? But God is able, God is supreme. God, He is, He is, He's sovereign. As we know already, he's sovereign. And I'm standing here right now because of his sovereignty. Right? Jesus is the great orchestrator. There is nothing that he can't do. Right? God is everything and everything is God. Right? God is the universe. Everything comes from him. Right? And we should understand that whatever it is that we go through, God is able, God is bigger. Jesus is mighty to save, right? God is mighty to save, you know, he's not going to bring us this far just to leave us, right? The Bible says that the mountains wax and they look for covering. This is the power, the power of God, right? Sometimes when I think about it, I say, wow, you know, that a God like this wants to have fellowship with me, who is so wretched, who is so flawed. His love never ends. Right? People might fail. Doctors might say that. You know, God, people are so partial. If you realize, most of us know we are partial. One day we like somebody, the next day we don't. But God's love never ends. And even in sin, God's love is still there to take us up and to pick us up. So let us just stay close to God. What we need to ensure that we have is our relationship with God, right? A relationship that defies all the odds. And trust me, it will be worth the while. So stay strong. God bless.